Uh, my name is Carla Simon. I teach at the Catholic University of America School of Law, and I'm affiliated with the um, U.S. Asia Law Institute at New York University School of Law. The name of my book is Civil Society in China, and the um, subtitle is The Legal Framework from Ancient Times to the New Reform Era. I think there are two different facets to the history of China with respect to uh, the development of civil society. I think that the situation is such that Western missionaries truly misunderstood whether or not there was a civil society in China during the dynastic era. In particular, the Western um, uh, missionaries said that there could not be a civil society in China during that period because the Chinese were pagans. In my research, um, which encompasses the entire dynastic period, and then of course that's the ancient times, it then moves forward into, into current times. Um, in my research, I discovered many instances in which the um, Western missionaries were absolutely wrong. Um, there were incredible um, developments with respect to different kinds of associations, particularly at the local level, um, with respect to charity, with not only the, um, the charitable developments with respect to the clans themselves, so in, internal to the clans, but also with the clans reaching out to the, the larger community. And this became even more developed as um, the Ming and the Qing dynasties progressed. Understanding China's civil society by taking into account the legal framework is obviously important for a legal scholar. Um, I need to ground it in my own discipline, which is the law. Um, but I also think it's tremendously important to to see the way in which the law either promoted civil society or did not promote civil society, and also the way in which the civil society changed the legal framework. So as time went on, for example, um, because there were so many different kinds of associations and charities, the law developed a process by which there was legal recognition given to these organizations, um, even though until the nationalist period there really was no formal legal um, recognition in terms of the registration of most of them. Some of them could be registered uh, like merchant associations, but up until the nationalist period, there really were no regulations that permitted um, the legal recognition. Now, I, th I think it's important to understand that law and society um, play on the, the developments together. 2011 was a what I call a remarkable year. Um, and it was remarkable because you begin with the scandals, the scandal at the Red Cross Society of China and what everybody knows in the Chinese um, press as the Guomei scandal. That, of course, brought the attention not only of the press but also of the government to the fact that these, these gongos, like, like the Red Cross Society, were incredibly mismanaged. It also resulted in a complete plummeting of the money that was given to those organizations. In fact, there's a quarter in, in 2011 in which more money was given to the government for social welfare relief efforts than was given to these organizations. That's the first thing. The second thing is that with the development of the 12, uh, of the 12 five-year plan, there was a recognition by both the party and the government that this had to change. The Ministry of Civil Affairs actually was able to sit down with the legislative division of the National People's Congress and help write that plan, which was a pretty remarkable event. And then finally, there were some other um, kinds of experiments that I didn't mention previously, and that was that the local, go local and provincial governments began experimenting with outsourcing social services to civil society organizations. What that means is that you begin to see the, the downsizing of government in, in consistent with the notion of small government, big society, and that has actually been a, a tremendous change as well.